Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Laurens van der Maaten. I'm a research scientist at uh, Facebook AI Research. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about secure multi-party computation following up on, on Andrew's talk. Secure multi-party computation is a truly exciting technique because it brings the potential to create all the value that machine learning can create while maintaining the privacy of data and while making sure that the data cannot be compromised. As Andrew just explained, this may allow us to solve important problems using machine learning that we cannot solve today. These techniques are part of a larger collection of secure computation techniques that also include homomorphic encryption and trusted execution environments. There have been a lot of developments in these techniques over the past couple of years, which led us to ask ourselves the question, what would a secure and privacy-preserving PyTorch look like? This is a difficult question. What does it even mean for a, a software platform like PyTorch to be secure or, or privacy-preserving? Could we have some kind of global flag that said torch.private is true, and then magically all your PyTorch computations are performed in a, in, a, in a secure way? We're not there yet, but over the last several months, a team of engineers and researchers at Facebook has worked very hard on delivering some first answers uh, to this question in a project that we call Crypten. I'm very excited to share some of our first results with you. We're open sourcing Crypten today so that everybody can build on the work that our team has done. So what is Crypten? Crypten is a platform for research in machine learning using secure computation techniques. It aims to enable machine learning researchers who are not cryptography experts to experiment with machine learning models using secure computing techniques and to get a realistic view of what is possible, what is difficult, how efficient these techniques are, etc. Krypton leverages and integrates with PyTorch and closely follows the PyTorch design principles and API. We hope that this lowers the barrier to entry for machine learning researchers and developers who are already familiar with PyTorch. In Krypton, we've adopted the following three design principles. Krypton is machine learning first. We design it to expose complex cryptographic techniques, such as secure MPC, in an API that is very familiar to machine learning researchers that use PyTorch, because it's essentially the same API. Krypton uses eager execution. We closely follow PyTorch's design philosophy with an imperative programming style. This makes debugging and learning about the underlying techniques easier. And Krypton is realistic. Each party in the multi-party computation runs in its own process, and if you want, on its own machine. All communication is real, and it's performed using the PyTorch distributed backends. There are no shortcuts. The core primitive in Krypton is the Crypt tensor. It is an object that looks just like a PyTorch tensor, but it's encrypted. It's provably impossible for a single party to inspect the content of the tensor unless all parties unanimously agree that the tensor can be revealed publicly, which is done in this example by calling the getPlainText function. Yet this is not stopping the crypt tensor from performing computations. For example, we can add two crypt tensors, which will result in another crypt tensor that contains the encrypted result of the addition. Note that in this process, none of the encrypted content was ever revealed to any of the parties. We can also add regular PyTorch tensors to crypt tensors, so you can mix and match encrypted and unencrypted data. The sum of a crypt tensor and a flow tensor is a crypt tensor. And again, the encrypted content is never revealed to any of the parties. Under the hood, the crypt tensor implements a lot of complex cryptographic machinery. In particular, it provides full implementations of arithmetic and XOR secret sharing, and tools that convert between these two types of secret sharing. Together, this allows Krypton to implement a large number of encrypted operations. I will get to that in a sec. Communication between the parties involved in secret sharing is real and efficient, as it's implemented via Torch distributed with the glue backends. The crypt tensor wraps all this cryptography in a tensor object that looks just like a regular PyTorch tensor, which makes it easy for machine, learn machine learning researchers to use, without having to understand the complexities about Galois fields, dealing with wraparounds, or understanding when to synchronize after communications. Crypten supports a large number of operations. 
We support all linear operations, including convolutions. We are assuming a curious but honest security model in which a trusted third party provides random beaver triples uh, to facilitate the computation. Krypton implements various efficient ways of computing integer powers. It can also compute square roots and non-integer powers in the logarithmic domain. It can do this because it implements operations such as logarithms, exponentials, and reciprocals via efficient approximations. Exponentials are performed using a limit approximation, logarithms using householder iterations, and reciprocals using Newton Repson, Repson iterations. This allows Krypton to implement virtually every operation you may be using in PyTorch as well, including sigmoids, softmaxes, binary and multi-class logistic loss functions, as well as their gradients. We also support operations such as computing minimum and maximum values, argmaxes, signs, values, and other operations that require us to compare to encrypted values. This may sound easy, but it's actually very difficult in an encrypted world, because the bits that indicates which of the two values is larger than the other cannot become known by any of the parties. We achieve this through an implementation that converts between arithmetic and XOR secret sharing as needed. Not only does Krypton support a very large collection of operations, it also supports these for an arbitrary number of parties. Because Krypton support for operations is almost the same as that of PyTorch itself, you can actually take complex PyTorch models, encrypt these models, and run them on encrypted inputs without much effort. In this example, we set up the ImageNet dataset, take a pre-trained ResNet 18 from Torch Vision, import that model into Krypton to encrypt it, and run it on the encrypted ImageNet images. If we open up the encrypted output of the model, we find that the output is just what you would expect. Krypton does not only support encrypted inference, but also encrypted training. To make training easy to do, Krypton includes an autograd implementation that works just like you've come to expect from PyTorch. This example shows how it works. The current version of Krypton still has a separate autograd crypt tensor, which is sort of like the variable object that used to exist in early versions of, uh, of PyTorch. In the next release of Krypton, we will merge the two so that every crypt tensor is autogradable right out of the box. Apart from that, the autograd in Krypton works just as you would expect. You call the backward function on a crypt tensor, and it performs the backpropagation. Gradients get stored in the grad field of the tensor, just like in PyTorch. The only difference is that these gradients are encrypted too. Together with the encrypted models I showed you on the previous slide, this provides you all the tools you need to train encrypted models on encrypted data. To make it easy for everyone to get started with Krypton, we provide a bunch of examples and tutorials. These examples and tutorials include encrypted inference of ResNets and encrypted training of Lynette models, linear SVMs, and contextual bandits. They also go in depth on some of the limitations that result from doing encrypted computation. We want to emphasize that Krypton is not a production-ready platform right now. It provides realistic estimates of the amount of computation and communication that machine learning via secure MPC requires, but it's still a proof of concept implementation. Our work on Krypton isn't only benefiting future users of Krypton, but it's benefiting all of you. As part of the Krypton project, we've teamed, teamed up with the core PyTorch team to improve the parts of PyTorch that are most important when you're working with advanced cryptographic algorithms, namely Gala fields, or as we call them in PyTorch lands, long tensors. Let's face it, long tensors haven't received a lot of love. So in PyTorch 1.3, We've added a lot of support for more long tensor operations. Yes, you can now convolve two long tensors. We've also made common long tensor operations a lot faster than they were before. The current release of Krypton focuses on secure multi-party computation, but we will not stop there. We already have a working prototype of a Crypt tensor that is backed by homomorphic encryption. It's not ready for release yet, but we hope to be able to share it with you in the coming months. Over time, we also plan to add a crypt tensor that is backed by a trusted execution environment via implementations based on platforms like Intel SGX. To be clear, we're not done yet. You cannot yet take Krypton and train a bird model from scratch. 
But we hope that Krypton is the start of a journey that, at the end of the road, will make secure and encrypted machine learning just as easy as PyTorch has made regular machine learning. And we want to invite all of you uh, to join us on this journey by giving us feedback, by contributing to the Krypton code base, or by developing awesome new applications on top of Krypton. We're excited to see what you come up with. Thank you. Okay, last session of the day. Uh, so we're going to switch.